Welcome to Civitai.com, the home of the generative AI art community. If you enjoy this video, please consider hitting us with a like and subscribing as it'll go a long way in helping us continue to bring you the highest quality AI community content. Please enjoy the video. We are live, we are bringing in the audio Twitch. What is up? I am hyped for today. I know a bunch of you are here because we have a very special guest right, right there above me. Um, you probably haven't seen his face before, but this is Inner Reflections AI. This is a Civitai guest creator stream. My name is Tyler. And even though I feel like this guy needs no introduction, I'm going to give it to you anyways. If it was not for Inner Reflections, I would not have gotten to understand how to use Comfy and do video to video as quickly or as easily as I did. And I'm sure that goes for a lot of people because if we look at the article page for Inner Reflections on Civitai, his most viewed article for his Comfy UI workflow, which is like anyone who comes to me and they're like, how can I do what you do? I've never used AI before. I say, go read that article because I can't explain it as good as he did. So 109,000 people have read this man's article and i bet at least 90,000 of them know how to do a regular video to video because of it and today we are very priv privileged because he actually just released a brand new guide on civitai for today to go along with the stream for unsampling and animate diff and hotshot the link to that twitch is in is pinned at the top of the chat discord i dropped the link in there for you guys without further ado in reflections introduce yourself to the people so they can know the man behind all the education and the magic so i mean i'm in reflections um you know me best by my guides i love doing video to video stuff um you know my dream is to to convert whatever footage into whatever other footage you want it to be. Um, you know, and as AI gets better, hopefully we can do more and more of that. Um, I love messing around with the models, the base stuff, figuring out new tools. And, you know, like we all do, trying to blow people's minds with what we can do with AI. So, yeah. So uh, um, I'm glad I'm, I'm honored to be here, honestly speaking, and uh, hopefully can share some useful information um, uh, for everyone. So before we get started, real quick, what um, why did you decide to go so deep into explaining this the way that you have for people in the articles in the first place? I know a lot of people like holding their little secrets close to their chest. What what was it for you that made you like because not only did you share everything in the article, but like. Dude, the articles are so well written and comprehensive and you give us screenshots and you explain the nodes and you do the whole the whole thing. What what made you decide to do that? Um, what I'll say facetiously a little bit is that I got tired of people asking me for the workflows, the <laughs> workflow begging and especially in Reddit. And I said to myself, I'm going to make the mother of all workflow guides so that when somebody asks, you know, whoever, they can keep their thing that makes them special, right? Like everyone wants to have a little like, you know, you know, whether it's a Laura or, or some or some setting or something like that that does a special, they can point to it and say, you want to learn what I do, start here and it's a base it just figure it out from there right um it was that i think and uh you know i had made a guide before my anime diff guide on like you know just the old vid to vid the old like image to image stuff that we used to do and i got some good feedback on it and i think it helped me make a good guide like i figured out where people do it and i think that i straddled that you no know, i'm a bit technical i'm not an ml engineer but i'm a bit technical and you know a bit uh uh, a bit artistic and you know being able to straddle that i think it gives me the position to kind of explain things hopefully in a way that you know made sense right so uh you know i think that people want to plug and place thing and having that you know once you make your first animate diff video you know and for all of you like you make it and it's yours and you've prompted it like it doesn't matter how good or bad in the future you'll look back at that one you'll you, you'll get hooked right and then 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 i don't need to teach you you're teaching yourself 100%. Okay, man. So why don't you go ahead and tell the people what we are going 
to learn today and how it's different from everything else that we've been doing up to now. Right. Um, so I'll talk a bit. I mean, the workflow is there and the explanation is there to hopefully explain things if I ever miss anything. But the concept is this, right? So if we imagine what we're doing with AI right now, which is, you know, we're diffusing. So we have a, a latent space that's created, a multidimensional space that's difficult to comprehend that we add a bunch of random stuff, random noise to, and then we have an AI that's learned to take that and turn it into something that's clean and you know, something that we want, right? So slowly denoise that, right? Um, the question is, you know, why are we using random noise? Like, you know, if we imagine the latent space as this infinite possibility, you have this infinite, you know, range of possibilities. You can imagine that somewhere in that randomness is exactly what you want, right? You think about it, that's, you know, that's the video that I want. I want to get there. Um, but, you know, all you have is a random noise generator based on a number, right? So you have no no ability to jump to that, right? So, so, um, I, so because, you know, it's a mathematical protocol that we're using, um, animate diff and, and stable diffusion in general can go two ways. It can turn noise into images, but it can also turn an image into noise. Um, I'm going to say I'm not the first person to use reverse sampling. I'm going to emphasize that. Like back in the old, um, back in the old, uh, like, you know, image to image days when that's all we had, you know, people were using that to help with their stability. Um, and even in the Banadoku server, there are uh, at least one very good workflow that uses um, the GIF control net and uses um, re reverse sampling. But it uses it in within the context of a image to image unsampling. So you turn an image into noise, and the noise using a prompt into a different image. And because you're using the noise that's generated from the image, you get a much more reliable res result. Um, um, but it's still kind of random, right? It's still got that old image to image look, and then they're passing it through animate diff to smooth things out, um, uh, which can help. But um, because animate diff works two ways too, there's no reason why you can't reverse sample um, um, that with the motion in it, and then resample it back together, and suddenly you have this, the noise that has the movement that you want in it. I mean, if you know the limitations, of course, if it's the video that you want, right? Because what I what you will, will happen is that if you want to add motion that's not there that um, if you want to add motion that's not there, then uh, you're going to struggle because you're going to not have that, um, you're not going to have that motion, right? So, so it's, uh, so it's, it's, you know, that you gain something and maybe you lose something, but I think there's lots of ways to use this well and uh, uh, use this well in order to, you know, get those clean transitions, right? Because if you look at what I do, I'm a simple man. I like, uh, I like to take live action footage and make, uh, make it anime, make it claymation, make it pixel art, you know, um, you know, that's the problem I'm trying to solve. I'm not making sexy spiders, um, uh, at least not yet. <laughs> maybe someday um so uh so i mean that's the concept here and there's a few key settings that make it possible and improve your results so i think that's the other thing it's like it's not obvious you can't just do it however you want um and so i'm going to explain the workflow as we go through it um to For talk about why why it matters for those of you that didn't get the sexy spider reference, he's talking about one of my Instagram videos where I made a pole dancing spider. Just FYI, for those of you that that didn't get that one. Um, <laughs> so in, in, su in some regards, I actually feel like what you're doing, though, is almost more difficult than doing something like what I've been doing, where I do complete like body morphing transformations on the people, because what you're doing is like you're chasing the style with like unparalleled consistency across the entire video, right? More or less. That's the goal. I mean, as I said, you know, the goal is to get as much style transfers you can have with while having the best ability you can have. Um, and uh, right now, a lot of people lean on very heavily on control nets. Like I see some workflows where people are using like three, four different control nets on mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. And what you find is that you just end up by 
like having a recolorized version of you know what looks a little bit you know that you're not you're you affect the style change you get this you get this battle between control nets and um and the style you're trying to do um and and you i think you just end up by wasting compute actually um i think that you know you um you end up by um you're just you're just fighting yourself it, it's, it's still a problem you know even with this workflow is not perfect it doesn't do every style perfectly but um, I think it's, it, it's able to push things that you couldn't do other ways. Well, let's dive into it. So whenever you're ready to screen share, then I will pop you up. Am here. I not screen sharing already? Oh, oh, there you are. Boom. Boom. Okay. And we will go full screen you. And let me hide myself because we don't need to see me while we're doing this. And all right. I'm excited. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean... Um, I'm going to reload the video. I've, I've, you know, I think you've posted the full versions of these videos, um, but, uh, but I'll start. Um, it, and there's SCXL and and 1.5 both work. It's a basically the same workflow. All I've changed between the two different workflows is um, is uh, obviously the checkpoints, the VAE. Um, the animate diff model, um, and then uh, the sample settings and uh, and the uh, the beta schedule. I think everything else is based and control nets too, right? So like you convert things to the thing, it works exactly the same way. Um, I think it's especially important with Hotshot because it has an eight frame context window. And so you need that extra stability to get the changes that you want. Like you can't rely on the longer context windows that you have with Animate Diff. Um, unfortunately, you know, still nobody's released a longer model. Um, but, uh, but you can use things in different ways this way. Um, so we're going to load. Uh, we'll do 40 frames of this um, just for processing time. I should mention that I still run on a 4070 Ti, um, mostly out of stubbornness. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, maybe I'm waiting for the 5090 to come out. But I mean, the nice thing about this workflow, although you're using more compute, um, is that it doesn't require it. Basically, the reverse sampling works as its own control net. Um, and, uh, and you need a lot less, um, control net in order to keep the stability that you're looking for. Okay. So the thing, the, the thing I'm, I'm interested in, and when I opened this up yesterday and looked at it, um, can you explain what's happening in the unsampling block for everyone? Yeah. Yeah, so what this is, what this is, right? This custom sampler, which I don't know that a lot of people use. It's the it's a traditional K sampler, um, but it's got everything separated out so you can select things individually. Okay, so usually you don't think about you know um, you know uh, you know what um, you know what what. Uh, uh, what sigmas you're using and things like that. But to go through this, um, what we're doing basically is it's just a normal case sampler. So if I pull things in here, we're using Euler, okay? Um, and uh, and then we're using, uh, as a scheduler, we're using your the Align Your Step scheduler, which is not actually available in the regular case sampler still. Um, I'm not 100% certain why. Um, um, but anyways, um, what... I really encourage people, even if you don't use my workflow uh, reverse sampling, align your steps works very well and will reduce the numbers of steps you need to make good results. Um, and then what the schedule is, right? If you've uh, if you've looked into it, it basically tells the AI how much um, how much of the denoising, how much of the turning the that noise into an image you want to do on each step. It's it's usually a it's a reverse exponential curve. Um, and by flipping it around, we're basically, instead of telling it to turn image into, uh, sorry, turning, um, uh, turning um, noise into, sorry, image, noise into image, we're turning image into noise. Um, so this is the magic thing, is flipping your sigmas. Um, so if you ever want to talk about flipping your sigmas, that's what that is. Okay. And the sampler custom is that uh, here, um, zoom in to that note yeah. a little so we can get the text up. Um, is this, 
is this was this already a sampler or was this something that you, you so, pieced nope, together this yourself? Is base comfy, base comfy exposed this okay. a little while ago. Um, it wasn't around with original anime diff. Um, you know, there's a cost a sampler custom. Then you saw the sampler, the advanced case sampler, which I was using in my hotshot guides. Um, and then this has come in the last several months. I I couldn't tell you exactly when. And there's even um, sampler custom advance. Um, uh, custom advanced, which I'm actually really excited about <laughs> because it's going to expose even more, even more stuff. Um, unfortunately, Anime Diff doesn't work with this right now. Um, I, gotcha. I talked to Boss Inc. and he told me that it would require a refactor of his code quite significantly. Okay. Um, what is important here, um, and uh, and uh, uh, what one of the most important things that I realized was I, I don't know about you, but do you care much about what K sampler you're using? Do you have a preference, J Book? Um, I think most well because oh, you're using LCM. You're using LCM. Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of stuck there. Yeah, right. So I should mention first of all that LCM deals with noise very differently than um than um than any of the other samplers and i haven't found that this does anything to the lcm stuff i did test it um okay so so yeah we, you couldn't just plug this directly into your workflow because lcm and noise and maybe someone smarter than me can sort figure it out um if it actually helps but uh, lcm deals with noise so differently than than other things and i'm sure there's a very good explanation that i just don't know um about um so um, but and the other so if you look at samplers otherwise, there's two kinds of samplers, right? There's the deterministic samplers, aka Euler is one of them, and then there's indeterm and then then there's um, then there's non-deterministic. So in the Euler A step, there's some randomness that gets inserted at each step, and as a result, um, you get if you were to do you know people if you you know back we're doing image stuff if you're doing image stuff with it you can see that if you do more steps things will keep changing where then Euler it always converges to a single point so like if you do 50 steps and 70 steps will probably look exactly identical you know if you're really extremely pushing through steps well things will still change um, in a uh, in, in if you add steps to Euler A right um, so it's important. Uh, for this, well, it adds extra consistently. You can still denoise with it, and you get something from it. But I think you get better. And I don't know how good the video, how fast you see with the video is. But if you look in that noise, and you, I'm pressing the right key, so we're scrolling through it really fast. You can kind of see that, despite there being randomness, um, you can kind of see that person moving around. I don't know if you see that. When you yeah, yeah, for sure. So, right. so in the one in the one point five workflow, does that mean that you're using Animate Diff V three? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I. That's what I've used exactly. And we'll we'll run through that too. You know, I'll I'll run through this uh, first. I guess we're almost done, uh, and we'll do that. So, I mean, that's the most important thing. So, basically, as a result of this, we've generated noise that is basically the noise of the the image of the thing. And if you actually put CFG to zero on both of these or one on both of these, you'd actually, and maybe I'll, I'll do it on a shorter run, um, is you can actually regenerate the video from the noise. Like if you're not using this, I'm not sure why. Um, and once again, someone maybe can explain this to me, but like if, if you do identical, um, if, if you're doing identical, um, um, uh, the CFG is identical on both sides. You're not actually regenerating the image. Um, but if you're very, very careful and you have the right checkpoints and stuff, you can actually use no control nets and get a, like a, get a, a some result out that's actually fairly close to the original. So, so here's here's two questions about this. One yeah. is, um, is there a specific reason why the scribble control net you have loaded in there works best? And two is, um. Is this workflow like is it ideal for IP adapters or is it more geared towards prompting? 
So what I would say is my experience, you know what, the problem with this is I spent so much time on this, I haven't messed around with the new IP adapters. It seems to be a more resistant to IP adapters than some of the other stuff, but I haven't tried all the settings for it. I mean, as I said, I, I, I worked on this. I found that it's really good with LoRa's, like it works very, very well with LoRa's. And maybe we'll, we'll go through an example where I'll add a LoRa to one of these. Um, but it works very, very well with LoRa's. Um, uh, there. So I mean, we've regenerated the photo, the video. So it, it basically, all you need the control net to do, like you can see. So if we're talking about control nets, um, if you're doing SDXL and stuff at all, and you haven't heard about Zincier, who's released a whole bunch of really high quality control nets. Um, he's done actually a new depth model. He has uh, done like actually a good line art model, which is what I was using here. Um, um, and I think he has an open pose model out now too. So uh, so he's made a re bunch of really high quality control nets for SDXL, which you know we've waited how long for them, um, but uh, I suggest you look at them too. Here, let me let me real quick before we move on. Let me put yeah. the hugging face link for that into the Twitch chat for people. But also, guys, um. I believe if you go into your comfy manager and you go to um, install models, if you search for that control net, it'll actually pop up directly in comfy and you can just install it directly in your comfy manager. Just FYI. So, okay, we are good. Twitch now has the control net. So, and this, this example that you just generated, this was with just like the base settings that were in the workflow, right? Yes. Yes. The workflow is designed, this workflow is designed to make the videos that I post, that you posted. So you take, you have the, the, you have the, um, you have the video and, and, uh, and, and it should, you just hit run and you'll be able to have the same output as me. And because there's no randomness, does it, there's no random number generator used here, so you should be basically identical. Zoom in on that. Zoom in on that video for us, just so the folks watching can can right, see it's the, the same, output. It's the same one you posted. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that. That's great, man. And what what's important is I chose a video. I mean, I I. I um, you know, there you can still get sometimes, uh, especially if the control net isn't is isn't perfect where you have a little bit of thing but you get a lot more consistency than you would any other way um and, and have you tried have you tried this this particular workflow with a second control net as well did you find like the one at kind of like that point four is the optimal place yeah so what i what i what i think what happens is because when you prompt or do whatever you're giving it not just style information but composition information the problem with using no control net is is that like the, it, it doesn't know what kind of composition to do so you need some control net early on in the diffusion process in order to like keep the composition the way you want it to be otherwise it will bug out a lot of the time especially if you're pushing for like a heavier style transfer um, so having a control net early, it matters. Um, but I'm keeping it light to try to get as much style transfer as I can. Um, um, because, you know, in some ways, the weakness of doing it this way is that you actually will follow the source video pretty closely as a general rule, right? Which is great, you know, for what I like to do. Um, but, um, but uh, you know, like I, as I said, one thing I've started trying to explore is how do we add extra noise back in at the end to see if we can add more randomness again, two or two parts maybe, right? Gotcha. So, okay. So I, 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 I this character style guys is also fr from um the counterfeit model the counterfeit model has that very particular big eyed anime thing going on yeah. so this is from the counterfeit <laughs> excel model which if you open up the workflow you'll see that that's the one that he had loaded in there um is there a excel model that you particularly like when you're doing stuff that has kind of more that um realistic texture to it yeah, I mean, I've used, um, I've got quite a few. Um, I think that recently I've ended up by using, um, what is it, um, the Xavi, the Xavi stuff. Um, I forget Chroma or Yumi has both of them. Um, Xavi makes pretty good uh, checkpoints. Um, uh, both of them, uh, both of them are pretty good for that. Um, you can use Juggernaut XL. I've used Juggernaut XL just fine with using this. 
Awesome. Um, and if you love pixel art, you should absolutely be using the uh, um, what's it? The Abyss Pixel Pixel. Um, so uh, um, if you want to see me work here, <laughs> if you want to try something different, we can do a little bit less frames. Uh, Dude, yeah, let's uh, let, let let's um let's, let's, let, change, let's, get... let's change let's change it. I've not done this, so this is a a live demo. Uh, this is what we do. This, this, this is, is what we this do. Li live demo here. Um, so yeah, twenty four <laughs> frames is work. So if you are going to try to use this method, the way I suggest you do it, and as I said, I've hooked things up. As I said, you can hook things up different ways when it comes to the unsampling process. I found that I get easier to like work through results if I. If I plug the um, the um, conditioning both into the positive prompt and the negative, uh, both in the unsampling and sampling step, but there's no reason why you couldn't do a completely empty, like a you know, like um, an empty uh, empty conditioning into it. Um, it gives you a more style transfer if you're not getting enough, um, but you sometimes need to do a little bit more control nets. So you'll lose a little bit of the uh, of the um, of the organization. I, in my in my opinion. So what I typically do is I don't usually change the TFG much from two. Sometimes I go to three. Sometimes I go to one. One means you get more style transfer. Three means it sticks to the video more. But if we stick to two there, and I I don't use high CFGs to start out with. So we start with you know. You know, 0.3. So we've changed the model we're using. We're doing this. I think this 0.4.4 for control nets works pretty well for this method. But you're welcome to try what you want if you want to try something different. Um, and I typically start with eight frames just because that's you know on that's the, the limitation. And then we can see um, we're not using. Gonna, we're going to get rid of the negative, the anime negative prompts. We're going to get rid of the. Positive prompts. Um, how many? How many steps are you running in this all together? Sixteen. In these it's 16, six, 16, 16, Yeah. We'll do something a bit more natural. And bam, we'll see. We do it. So, um, you could do pixel art just by doing a low denoise vid to vid. I think people have quite successfully done that. So, like, if you um, uh, if you did it, and I, we can we can have a look at what that would look like. Um, but this gives you more change. This is why you get that extra kind of punchiness to the stuff that I've done recently, um, because you can actually do full denoising stuff. Um, um, but it it is a little bit sometimes redundant. And there's no reason why I, I'm starting at step zero. I'm doing a full denoise. You could do partial denoise stuff with this method too, and it works fine. Um, right on. Man, it's so um so, so sorry, I'm just gonna point out one thing. One of the hardest things it. to deal with, which happens sometimes, is you can see here the the um the latents are different colors. I don't know why that ever happens. Um like you'd think that like they'd all kind of become the same color, but here you see some what I call flashing. It's it, it's more visible with SCXL, but it it's not a hot shot thing. It's uh, also in if you do the I tried the XCXL beta with this, and you get the same problems. I, I think it's something to do with the models. Um, and if you have a lot of control nets, sometimes you will see that this will um, correspond, and you'll get some flashing in in your uh, final result. Um, but um, OK, so she's getting pixely. That's pretty good, I'd say. Wow. Reasonably, reasonably pixely. But like I think if we think, ah, oh, we could push it a little bit. So we uh, what I'll do is I'll punch up the CFG a little bit. Um, that's already pre that, that's already pretty sick, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, I think the background can do it. Let's see what happens. So the more you push this difference, the more you push the CFG, the more stuff you'll add. And eventually you'll even with the noise that you're using, you'll eventually break it. Like um, but uh but uh it's it's uh, it, 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 but it, as I said, it, it still will help with stability, even if you're even if you're using super high CFGs, which I can say that I've actually used like CFGs of like thirty occasionally with Hotshot for whatever reason it works. Bro, um, I just had I just had an idea for for a video to do today. Just looking at that, and I'm not going to say it out loud, and I'll show it to you guys after it's done. <laughs> So if we compare the two, actually look pretty close. Look at look at look at look at look at the look at what what Pixel Pusher just posted in the Discord chat. Should I? 
Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's me. <laughs> uh, uh, I can't. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me show this to my girlfriend real quick. Jane. No problem. Congratulations, Joe. You made her sigh. <laughs> So if you're getting flashing, if you're getting flashing and you see that, um, your choices are, I mean, some videos are worse for it than others, and I'm not sure why that is. I think that if you have a video which has um, a lot of um, changes in the brightness, I think you'll see that a little bit more there. Um, one thing to try um, is this is a KII JI node, um, uh, custom custom sigmas so if you look at custom sigmas it's it if you look here he has the same you, if you copy and paste one of these he's got a little tool tip here the sdxl one if you try the sigmas but try getting rid of the last step so the 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 instability comes from the the very first steps that you're denoising for whatever reason or you're renoising i should say or unsampling um sometimes you can get rid of this and that will help a little bit to it um, other times, it's the um, some control nets are more susceptible to it. I use Zins here for anime because it's very, very good. It doesn't seem to do this at all. Um, so that's part of the reason why this control net's used. Um, I think this guy's stuff is generally more robust for whatever reason, so it's it's less likely to. And the the that. flashing the flashing you're talking about is what we see in that clip, right? That he posted in the yeah, hundred percent. What you're what you're seeing is if you looked at the the reason why I expose this is just so you can see it. Um, how you can see how a clip can do that, and like in my video, there's nothing. It doesn't. It gets turned back into image without any flashing involved. And on another video, you'll cause lots of flashing. If your CFG is a lot higher, or if uh, or if you have a lot of control net weights, um, sometimes you get the same thing. Okay, so the when when you see the flashing, you want to try to balance out the CFG and the control net. Control nets and the and as I said, you can you can mess around with the steps. I found that trying to figure out something. Maybe there's a better schedule. I think that's maybe. Um, uh, Sampler, sorry, um, custom sigmas. So the things I've tried that have helped on occasion is yeah, custom sigmas. Okay, so custom so sigmas. Look, so I, I I haven't included that. If you use one point five, you don't you rarely if ever see this problem. It happens gotcha. occasionally. It does happen occasionally. But if I imagine a lot of people still love one point five a lot, um, the one point five does not seem to have this problem. I imagine the control nets are better trained or whatever, and that's part of it. Um, but even if you look at the um, the, you don't get as much instability in the reverse. So maybe the the animate diff is also more stable there too. So it's a it's a sigma problem. I've done weird things like chop off part of the sigmas and only doing you know forgetting about the first steps that's helped sometimes too um um yeah um so all these things all these things can be beneficial gotcha yeah because i even see in in one of the other clips that um someone just posted in the chat that in the same clip you're doing he got a really good style transfer but his but the background is doing the same Flash flashing a thing bit. yeah 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 um, good so to good bit, to know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, as I said, if if you're if you have time to mess around and figure out what what's the source of that, then uh, be my guest, and uh, you'll be my hero if you can if you can have like a significant consistent way to get rid of it. Um, but uh, as I said, I didn't include the custom sample advance because I thought it confused people. Um, and maybe in retrospect, I should. And I'm, if it if there's enough need for it, I'll 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 change it uh, for that. Um, but I would I wouldn't use the if you're using it with sorry what I'm doing here is I'm copying and pasting this the SAXL one and I'm cutting I'm cutting that I'm cutting off just the end here we're using that we're interpolating to 16 steps and we're put plugging that only into the unsampling sigmas instead um, we can do uh, 
Okay, so that gets plugged in alongside the flip sigmas as well, right? Oh, sorry. Yes, I should. Be, yes, it should be like this. My bad. Okay. Okay. So the yeah. the custom sigmas goes into the flip, and then the flip goes into sigmas. Yeah. 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 So hopefully you'll see if I do this that this is better. It's not gone, but it's it's better. Um, I just said Surge it's, it's a. Go ahead. Oh no! I was going to reply to um someone in the in the Twitch chat, Sergius. This is using the Scribble SDXL control net that is linked in the chat right above your your question. Sorry, Inner. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. And I'm using realistic line art with it. You can see I found that didn't see if you look at the documentation for what he's done. So if you look here, although it's not completely, they're still flashing there. If you compare it to what we were getting before, it's actually a little bit better. It works better for whatever reason. Um, um, but that's just what I've been working on. You can plug any kind of control net into this. So I've used head, like soft edge, I've put in, um, I have, you know, you probably could put in canny or whatever, but I've tried, uh, you know, line art and soft edge and anything. It works pretty well with anything that you're doing. Now, in all the tests that you have done with this, are is there like a a specific type of video you've tried where like just like the video motion didn't work well or like are there certain things you try to lean towards because you know that you can all you'll probably 90 percent of the time get something good out of it is there like a, a certain type of video this works best on or is it really just I, have at it and experiment i think that you can like anytime you just want to do a style transfer if you're looking to do a style transfer, I think that this is probably, you know, as I said, especially once we can, if we can get the flashing sorted out um, completely, um, consistently all the time, um, I think that that's the best use case for this. Um, so if you look at my recent stuff that I've done, it's all using this method. Um, um, if that's what you're asking me about, I don't know if there's something else you're asking more specifically. Um, um, but like it works really well. Um, if you compare it to to just using the latents um, without anything, um, especially with Hotshot, because Hotshot's motion model can be a lot more finicky, um, but by using by, by using uh, by using control noise, you can get consistency between frames that at a higher CFG that you wouldn't be able to do any other way. Gotcha, gotcha, man. I'm really I'm really excited to play with this and see because like. I have a SDXL workflow I use that uses the four-step lightning, Laura, um, that it, it, it does good, but there's still just like a lot of flicker. And sometimes you just want to do the style transfer thing. You don't yeah. want a full crazy, you know, so I think for everyone, this is a really good tool to have in the tool belt. And I think you guys will be able to make some really, really cool stuff with this. Maybe even for the Project Odyssey competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, one thing I've explored using it with, um, I don't know that I have. Oh, actually I do uh, maybe have an example of it. Um, just a second here. If you guys are okay seeing a much messier workflow. Are you kidding me? Uh, the, it, every, the, the favorite food around these parts is spaghetti. Ah. Yes, we all love it. Uh, here, I'm pulling <laughs> up uh, this. Um, so, if you I have a pre this. I have appreciated that most people making workflows now have started to really gravitate towards um, organizing them before releasing well, people them. People <laughs> like to get that note, and I'm still stubbornly against them. Bro, uh, I ha I hate them. I hate them. I can't use it. It it I just like I can't I can't do it. Here, sorry, I was before we load that. Um, yeah. So, anyways, occasionally get flashing. I can't. I can't exactly say why. It's not like a CFG thing. It's. It is what it is. Um, but here, um, one thing that's really cool about this. Uh, just a second here. We'll do this. We're gonna do. Yeah, creepy guy. I agree. The be, being able to see where all the nodes are actually connected makes a big difference just in like the the general understanding of what's going on in the workflow. 
I think for a tutorial, especially like when you make your own stuff here, is he talking here? Okay. So, um, um, so this Legolas one, I think people like claymation, um, for claymation I'm using, uh, so this is a example of a workflow with Alora. It's a lot more messy. You can see I'm using my custom Sigma's trick here. Um, um, to do that, I'm still using Euler. The, all the other settings are the same. Um, here I'm using the Misto line one, uh, which is another great line art that came out around this time of, of Zins here. It was, this was before Zins here existed. Um, so that's why we did it. It's a big godsend if you're trying to do anything with uh, SDXL. Um, um, you see here I've loaded um, Genmix Artful as the base one. I not sure why I tried it. You actually will find, by the way, that some checkpoints seem to cause more flashing than others. I'm not 100% sure why. I mean, I think that's, a, that, that's just true for Animate Diff in general. Just not all checkpoints react to, the anim react to animating yeah. over the frames and over the context window equally. And I think that SDXL especially, the amount of training maybe affects it a lot different. And I think that Animate Diff was made after the training was like after like after like uh, Animate Diff XL and Hotshot were made on like base base like um, uh, SDXL. Whereas I think Animate Diff was made with all those you know anime and other models in mind too. So I maybe was trained on them. I'm not 100 percent sure, but you can tell that. Um, you can see here that I've messed around a little bit about the strength of the LoRa. Um, uh, the clip strength doesn't do much, which is why I haven't messed around with it. Um, but if you're using LoRa's, which are a really powerful way to use this workflow, LoRa's um, also seem to override some of the flashing. So good to know. Mm. Um, um, so you can sometimes, like, it, you, for whatever reason, I don't know why sometimes the flashing's there and it causes fed and other times it's not um and especially if you're having trouble is you know here you can see i'm using the laura in the unsampling step sorry it's a lot a little bit messier to see but this is this here is all unsampling i've used the laura all in the unsampling step um you can use it um um you can use, uh, you could not use it in the unsampling step. I've for a lot of for some of the more recent stuff that I've done, I've actually not used the lore in the unsampling step. Um, uh, if I if it's not if you're not getting enough style transfer, that's one solution to the problem at least. Um, the reason why I reduce the clip strength of this, just so you know, is the claymate lore tends to erase people's eyes for whatever reason. So they'll move and they'll suddenly just be like sticks of clay <laughs> that many eyeballs, um, which is a little bit creepy. Um, so maybe if it's your thing, you can do that. But uh, um, otherwise, here. So you got our noise. The other thing I would say is if you're looking, just as a general comment, if you're looking to make things faster, um, forgetting about context overlap altogether, I've done that quite a bit. Um, it, uh, you know, still having some overlap if you're noticing some context shift is still helpful. So I, I'm not saying it's good in all cases, um, but a lot of the times you can get away with any context overlap because it's actually the, the uniform scheduler that's making things smooth and not the overlap that is. Gotcha. That's a, that's a pretty, yeah. that's a pretty cool tip. I mean, it, you can save like, you know, 20% compute or with Hotshot if you're doing like a context overlap of three, mm -hmm. which you may want to do for like the final result. Like, um, uh, but like you can save a lot of time, right? Like I'm running a lot faster because, because I'm having no overlap here. Um, I've switched to the standard uniform from loop uniform. You can still I'm seeing using that here. This is an older workflow for that reason. Um, but um, uh, but uh, is the only is the only difference in this one um, the yeah. fact that you're using a Laura and that you're doing the custom Sigma thing? So it's a custom Sigma thing. It's exactly as as it was. Um, the custom Sigma as I put over here, rather than there, so it's less organized, but um, it's all there. A slightly different prompt, but yeah, everything else is the same. I mean, the CFGs is different. I think I did five here and two here. I think still, I think three. Sorry. Um, you, if you're if you increase this, you sometimes have to increase this, and then you do the same control net thing where you're like increasing this, and increasing this. It's better if you just keep this lower if you're having trouble. Um, the reason why I'm showing you this is that you can actually get lip sync. You can actually get lip sync because part of the issue with with us losing lip sync, and I think Tyler, you've talked to me about how you think one of the biggest barriers to doing, you know, like narrative stuff is there's no good lip sync option. Mm -hmm. If you keep if you control with having good control nets, it helps too. But by controlling the CFG, 
um, especially around the mouth area. Um, so if you you can you can find ways to mask the mouth out for somebody by controlling the way the mask out of air, you can actually get a lip sync where you wouldn't otherwise. Are you using a mask in this one? No, right? Uh, no, I'm not using a mask in this one. Um, this one it it just works because because claymation style doesn't need to do a lot of changing to the uh, to the um, uh, doesn't do a lot of changing to the uh, to the video, and I'm not ch cranking up the CFG a lot. Like I'm not going to ten or something like that. So it works, right? Gotcha. Okay. Right. So, I like for, for the anime model, for example, like um, if you wanted to make someone talking lip sync, you could mask out the mouth and just uh, change. And how would you do it? Um, uh, I have nothing here that I'm proud to show, so I'm not going to show <laughs> anything. Um, I'm just anything. I don't think I have a workflow that is of any of anything that I, I, I care to show in a live. They stream. they um, can they, they 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 can figure that out if they want to do it. Um, what you can do is um, there's here um, there is um, uh, I think. Uh, no, 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 this is wrong. Uh, I'm trying to remember how I did it. Um, anyways, there's, there is a setting here. Oh, I think it's because, oh, here it's because, uh, it's because I, this, these are actually, I'm using a depreciated note there. There is a Sigma scheduler node here where you can, um, you can add, uh, or, uh, Yeah, sorry. There's this. These are depreciated. This is an old workflow. That's why I'm getting confused here. But there's a custom CFG node that lets you do a. Uh, I forget which one it is. So uh, lets you do. Uh, anyways, custom CFG, and then you can make a, a mask. Okay. And you can feed masks into it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I I remember this is the thing that you had me try the the other night too. Anyway, or so when, my, yeah. if you control, if you got reverse noise helps that plus a control net plus not overdoing the CFG in the mouth area, suddenly this guy is actually still talking. We have an, I mean, it helps that he's, you know, he's doing a good job enunciating his words, right? <laughs> um, right. Um, but you actually have the mouth doing what it's supposed to do, right? Like you can see he's. He's, he's singing about the dwarves going to Isengard. So, uh, so they, the hobbits going to Isengard. So, um, so you can see how we've we've made the change, but we've kept the we've kept the mouth motion. Anyways, that's such a good style transfer, man. Yeah, yeah, the claymation works. Everyone loves it. So the secret is claymate, um, um, and uh, you don't need a lot of denoise, or it works really well with this workflow. So uh, plug it in. As I said, I, I I think reducing you don't have to reduce the strength. You can try it without it. But if you're finding like weird stuff happening with that, you mess around with that. In other models, I've actually increased the strength if if I'm not getting the style transfer I want. So um, Laura seemed to be a bit more flexible than IP adapters right now in my current iterations of figuring out. But as I said, that's a caveat is I really haven't gone deep into IP adapter with this. Gotcha. I, I would almost imagine that the IP adapter might um just just like looking at the workflow and looking at the outputs, I feel like the IP adapter might be maybe a little better suited or easier to use in the 1.5 version of the workflow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we haven't looked into it, but so we can pull it up. We have time, I think, still. Yeah, no, man, we're 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 good. We we can cut this whenever you want to cut it. But oh no, yeah, um, it is it is Friday. We are we are we're all chillaxing. anime diff vibing right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so you see the SCXL the one point five workflow is no different than the other workflow. Um, you still see I've changed the align your steps scheduler to use SD1 choice of there. We're still using Euler. We've changed the model. Um, you know, in fact, I actually did it later on with um, Dark Sushi Mix. Is there a is there a is there a special control net you like in the 1.5 one 
or just um, regular I've always line been art? Partial to line art. I've always been partial to line art, and it's because it worked really well back in the the image to image days. Like it was, mm. in my opinion, the one that like allowed enough style change without causing control issues. Like you know, people love tile and stuff like that. And I said, if you're using tile, you might as well just do a lower denoise because to me, it looked the same. But uh, so I'm a fan of line art, but uh, and I'm not even using the plus model here. It's just because I haven't gone back and done a lot of 1.5 stuff. Um, if you saw my uh, animatrix stuff, that's actually all this. This is this workflow. Maybe I'll pull that in instead because everyone can look at the other stuff. So uh, um, uh, where is this? Daily animatrix. Um, uh, let's do this scene. Okay, so it's it's going to see a lot of more jank and messiness, but it's the same, exactly the same process. I'm just using different clip. We're putting in here, it's three, and I think we're using three on both sides. You see, I'm not having to change the CFG much. And for whatever reason, it does the style transfer really well, despite not increasing the CFG. Um, and you know, kind of all the other settings are as you would expect it with Animate Diff um, there. And here, I guess I'm using depth instead of line art. I forget. I forget if I tested the other ones or that's or that's what I chose to use. Have you have you have you um, started using uh, depth anything V2? Um, I haven't because as soon as the Zin Seer line art models came out, I started using them instead of depth. The re main reason why I was using depth before um, is because it was the only good, really good. Um, you know, there was that one good open post model, um, but um, um, it was the only good um, control net for SDXL. Um, I should mention that the reason why I don't use two SD control nets is because I don't have the VRAM. <laughs> um, so uh, you may get better results if you're uh, if you maybe do lighter and use two or something like that. So um, give it a shot. Right on. Dude, I are you, I hope um I know a couple people have been playing with this as you've been you've been doing it. If you guys are getting anything good, please throw it in the in the chat so we can see what you guys have been making while we've been doing this. We've gotten two videos so far out of this already. <laughs> um one of the interesting things and the reason why I'm showing you this particular scene here is I actually do think that you can see where 1.5 just doesn't understand um, concepts in the same way that SDXL does. Even though this, this uh, by controlling the noise, you can really keep things where they should be. Um, you can see like holding a gun is not something that 1.5 understands as well. Actually, that's not the one I wanted to do. It's actually this one. Um, um, there and, uh, and the other thing with this you don't actually have to do a ton of prompting you have to prompt for the style and you'll find sometimes that if you if you get some weird artifacts like it's good to describe what's in the image um, because um, so otherwise your style will sometimes cause like things to, to there so there is some there is some advantage to it um, to do so like um, I really find that with this workflow that you actually have control. I feel like you have control again. Like prompts start mattering a lot. You realize doing different prompts, um, um, uh, prompts start mattering a lot. You can go back to using Laura's again. As I said, it's not LCM, which is the only thing that kind of it's kind of crummy. You have to do so many steps to. You're 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 speaking to the heart of the prompts still matter crowd right now. <laughs> oh yeah 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 like you can actually do a lot with prompting like I, I i found that you know i'm not i don't consider myself a very good prompter um i think that i bet around with messing around with anime diff settings as you can see like this um um but um but i do think that um prompting uh prompting really starts mattering again 
uh, with this kind of workflow. And you can do a lot. Like you, you can push it. You can add things that don't exist there. I think that especially if you have the motion that you want, it's there. And I do think that this allows more potential than what I'm, I'm giving you the obvious, the obvious workflow here, right? Which is a bid to bid workflow. But there's no reason why you couldn't use some of this and then paste a latent on random noise and then use that, right? So you're converting part of the image, but not other part of the image. Um, you're combining noises together to make some kind of third thing, right? You know, there's no reason why you can you can't do that. Um, um, which is, I the, think, where I might go next with it. The the thing the thing that I love about when you give the, when you give these workflows to like when you release these workflows, they're so kind of like like you you intentionally make it bare bones. One for simplicity to understand too, because obviously like for what you want to do, you don't need to, to make a whole mess of nodes, but like, um, it was incredibly I, easy for me to take your original 1.5 vid to vid workflow and just start iterating on the skeleton of that over time to get where my, my ideas wanted to take me. And I would hope that that's what people see this as is like, this is the base how can how can we continue to like build on this for the specific things we all want to do right and if you want to get back to me specifically if you can figure out how to stop the stupid flashing consistently like i can do it <laughs> in a video to video sense i can fix it and that's why i post stuff right and it's, it doesn't happen all the time it doesn't happen with every style it's a style transfer like some style transfers don't have it at all others try transfers have it a lot some checkpoints a lot some don't as i said using laura's helps um, but if there's a thing there, but anyways, I want to, one thing I wanted to comment is, is like with this, what's interesting is I do what I feel. And I like, this is completely conjecture. You can disagree and think what you want. As I think with this, we've actually forced the model to, to, to stick with the structure of the images so much. It has no idea what a hand over a gun looks like. So it doesn't know what the heck to do here, but you can see we keep it. So it looks good, but there's like, you know, even though we can prompt for gun or whatever, I mean, it makes sense, you know, training data and whatnot, and I'm using an anime model. But I think that what's interesting is here, you can really push the limits where you're forcing it to stay consistent, even though prompting wise, it has no idea what's going on. Right. Hey, Which um, I think in yeah, a real, real quick, if you go into the Discord chat, um, Militant Hitch Hitchhiker uh, just tagged you. If you click on that little link next to it that says Office Hours, um, go ahead and read the, the comment that he wrote above. Uh, I think he was replying to you as you were talking about the flashing. Oh, oh interesting. The occurrence comes late, it doesn't hold to control that. So we uh, actually have coherence and fine tuning. You fine tune the model. There you go. See, I knew this is why it's good to share because if I kept this to myself, I'd never be able to figure it out. We use a fine tuning, use a tenement, get a situation like it feels in different way. So uh, Twitch chat, just so you guys can see what we're what we're reading. Um, Militant, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste what you wrote into the Twitch chat so they can they can read that as well. Uh, but it's the character limit is a little is a little high, so I'm going to. That's really, really cool. cool. That I mean, Twitch the that is from Militant Hitchhiker. Sorry, Inner. Yeah, no, no, no. It's good. I mean, can we can we fix it? <laughs> can we can we fix it? That's the question. Because I don't think it's ever been a problem. No one's noticed it before. I think doing something like this, you expose stuff about the model that no one's seen before. You haven't seen. You have like I've never before seen the. Um, um, oh, sorry. Um, I've never before seen the fact that a sampler actually matters. And I will say that it's worth exploring. I've used Euler and I, I tend to use Euler because I think, you know, there's thing there's some are end up by being more reliable than others. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, um, in terms, uh, well, more liable. It some work better with one footage and one model than another one does too. There is some variability, and and so if you want to, you know, change um, where am I? What are you putting it? What what uh, sam what sampler you end up by using? I think I think it's worth doing uh, too. So um, feel free to explore there too. Um, oh. 
the the hs the hsxl temporal layers oh um never mind thank you cats cats just cats just posted the link to the hugging face for those of you that need the um hotshot xl temporal layers i'll go ahead and put that in twitch as well yeah i use that because it's uh it's prunes so it uses less vram pixel pusher jeru bro what are we doing what are we doing right now <laughs> What what are we doing? Twitch anime, what are, baby. What 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 are we what are we doing, Pixel Pusher? Why 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 why? Yes, this is this is not Tyler. This is Tyla. <laughs> and you're very beautiful. <laughs> this is this is this is what I sub subject myself to. I bring them knowledge, and they turn me into <laughs> into an anime girl. <laughs> So okay, just, what one thing I want to point out here is this yes. is without reverse noise, so this is the same thing. And you feel free to compare it to. So if you pull the latent over here, you have to un um, you have to um, uh, you have to add the noise back in again. Um, anyways, um, so with noise added back in again, you'll see that like it has no idea what the hand looks like on the gun, right? So if you compare that to this, right? you see that there is different, even though, you know, style transfer wise, ooh, sorry that I forgot to, uh, <laughs> um, oh, we're, we're, uh, we're upscaling, so it's not doing it. Anyways, um, that's just a point I want to make. You can compare the two together, maybe with better control nets, you can do it. I'm not saying this is perfect for every solution. I just think that this is another way to do it. It certainly, it certainly is very powerful. And I think that Smarter people will also figure out other ways to use it and ingenious ways to like control things that they couldn't otherwise, right? Um, yeah. So, are there specific situations where you would lean further into um, 1.5 over Excel or vice versa? Um, I mean, I feel like 1.5 has got like some really sweet fine tunes. I mean, there's a lot of support for it, right? And a lot of the, if you're having, having new nodes, 1.5 is where they seem to come first. Um, these days, honestly, I love SDXL. And if you start using it and you start getting good results from it, I think that what pushes people away from SDXL is, is that if you get it, if you start getting like, you've tried two or three or four times, you get shitty results with it. You're not going to, you're not going to like, not going to make you happy and you're going to just quit doing it um, um so um so i mean hopefully with this you use it and what you'll realize with sdxl and i think some people on the banadoku discard have started using it a bit more they realize like you know the amount of like motion and direction and human positioning and all this kind of stuff that you you know you you can do with there that you know 1.5 to do it has been so overtrained i think that i end up by sticking with yes uh, with hotshot I, I i think you know maybe that's my special magic that's what makes me special, right? So, <laughs> right we all got to do our thing right but you know certainly there's creators using sdxl more and i think it's got it's got that power so yeah yeah Right on, man. I think a lot of people probably steer away from Excel too, just because of um, hardware limitations, because it does take it does eat up a little bit more VRAM. Yeah, so I you think know that's part of it, it too. Act it actually doesn't. I'll emphasize that it doesn't. It's a, it, like because you're using eight frames for better or for worse. Um, um, it actually it's pretty close. I mean, if you've if you've got less than twelve, I can't comment. But for me, like I have my workflows for me. I do say that you know 1.5 is a little bit less and if you're really cutting it and you have an older gpu with less with us vram you know maybe that's that's all you feel like you can do um but with one point with uh with scxl you can you can you can you know in hotshot you can do a lot and here's 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 the million dollar question has anyone tried using pony with it yet <laughs> Uh, Pony is a, a, like militant hitchhiker probably would comment. Pony is the way it's been trained breaks everything. 
<laughs> um, so um, if you want to use something with Pony in it, try anything XL. It is it is a very I've used that for a few other things. Um, it does have some Pony in it. It's like twelve point five percent Pony, I think. Um, so I do think I think if we see enough, you know, fine tunes of fine tunes of fine tunes of model merges of model merges of model merges, um, Pony may be put in the mix and not be fucking around with stuff. Um, um, yeah, yeah. The militant hitchhikers putting in the goal. Pony diffuses too late for control nets to hold. So, uh, um, and so it's a, it's the same problem with uh, um, it's the same problem with um, with uh, Hotshot or Animate Diff XL. I've tried both. Just so you don't have to. Um, um, it doesn't it doesn't work. Text to image, control nets, whatever. It's all it's all messed up. Right on, man. Is there any other knowledge you feel like needs to be imparted on us while we are here today? Because let me emphasize that if any of this video, as you guys rewatch it on YouTube, or just for those of you watching live now, all 620 of you, um, if there's something you guys didn't get, I promise you, if you go back and you read the article that he posted on his Civitai account that coincides with this video, you will gain a much easier, deeper understanding of all this because the way he lays out the articles are amazing. And I know for myself, as much as I rather just watch a video in five minutes and then think I'm a pro at something, when I force myself to actually read and follow the thing, I end up that much better for it. So, um, Make sure you guys hit up the article. <laughs> and if you don't understand, please post. As I said, this one was a little bit, you know, I was a little bit more time crunch than I am usually. So if there's something that's not clear, just tell me you need to explain this better. And I will, I'm more than happy to go back and, and explain it a little bit better if, uh, if that helps. Uh, wait, real quick in the discord chat, we got some fireplace what? pixel, pixel art that that's, that's pretty good, man. I think that's a pretty good style transfer right there. This is nice. Right on, dude. It's so it, it makes me so stoked to see that like when people come on and they're explaining things and you guys like immediately start diving in and playing with it and send the results like that 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 gets me hyped up. Um Inner, why don't you tell the people since I, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap up here. Um why don't you tell all the people where they can find you? And if they want to follow you on social media, what accounts are you the most active on? And, you know, plug, plug yourself. <laughs> plug myself. Okay. I'm on, uh, I'm on Instagram. That's probably where I post most of everything that I do. Um, at least the artistic side of things. So, uh, so, um, inner at inner reflections AI. Um, I also have, um, I also am fairly active on Twitter as well. Um, I fucked up when I signed up for Twitter, so I have inner refle, i n f e r r e f l e one one three one two. Um, that's uh, that's uh, my bad. Um, but uh, um, but yeah, yeah. Those are those are probably where I'm most uh, most doing. I do have I do have a TikTok. I don't really use it very much. Uh, I do occasionally post on it, um, and uh, you'll see my on Reddit too here and there. Uh, someone just posted Jeru, Jeru, we're gonna, we're gonna ban you. We're, we're gonna have to ban you, bro. We're gonna, we're gonna have to ban you. You're not, you're not allowed to use inner reflections workflows anymore. <laughs> this isn't, we're gonna, we're gonna have to, yeah, you're, you're gonna, you're, we're gonna have to delete your Civitai account now. <laughs> um, Someone, uh, someone also just posted one that he said he he used um pony on or uh, Midgard pony SDXL photo realistic. There you go. As I said, I don't I don't use a lot of pony. It's, it's but uh, well, dude, it's inner, popular. It's popular. It is popular. It is taken over. It is taken <laughs> over. But dude, inner, thank you so much for coming and running through that with us. And thank you for the article and thank you for being the beacon of sharing knowledge that you are in the community because um, uh, there is a lot of us that are that much better at what we do for it. So your, um, your work has not gone, gone 
unappreciated. Be sure, sure of that. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And if anyone's working on any big projects and you want some consulting or whatever, I'm always happy to help out. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, keep sharing. You know, as I said, you know, sometimes when you see close source stuff happen, um, I think that the power that we have is that we're big. Um, and we and if everyone works on a little piece of it, I think we can what we can pull out of these models is just spectacular. So just keep it up, everyone. And uh, and uh, we'll be making some beautiful stuff. We are already making beautiful stuff, especially thanks to you. So, guys, one time in the chats, can we get a big thank you to Inner Reflections for not only coming on and dropping a new base workflow and a new article on us, but also giving us the unexpected face reveal. I feel like <laughs> I feel like more and more people are actually getting comfortable um, being on camera in the community, which is it's always nice to to take this thing that is very computer centric and put the person behind it. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing this with us. I know everyone else does as well, judging by all the comments I've seen in the chats. Um, you, sir, are a legend. And I think that's going to do it for us for today, guys. For those of you that would like to follow along with this video again, this will be on the Civitai YouTube channel first thing Monday morning. But until then, go hit up the article because the article will teach you everything you need to know. Inner, say goodbye to the people one more time before we sign off here. Bye bye, guys. Happy right. diffusing. <laughs> bye. All right, everyone. Well, this, it, this has been another um, Civitai guest creator session. And before we get going real quick, um, next week, Friday, our guest creator stream is going to be with my good friend and my man, um, Syntax Diffusion. Mm -hmm aka chris.exe and he is incredibly talented and if you guys follow him on instagram um chris is always always leveling up i've been really good friends with him since the warp fusion days and he was one of the people that got the best um lip and hand consistency in warp and the man's knowledge is just sprawling i don't know what we're gonna do next week but i know Chris, it, we're, we're going to have some fun um, with Chris and I. So one more time, if you guys do not. If you guys did not see it at the beginning, this is the article on the Civitai website that Inner Reflections dropped today to coincide with what he just showed us. I will go ahead and paste that in the chats one more time. And um, punk better, punk butter. OMI, OMI. What's that an acronym for? I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're. What you're asking there, or I'm just forgetting. I don't know what OMI is. Um. Yeah, man. I I appreciate you guys. Ali will be back on Monday for our regularly scheduled um office hours, and don't miss our Twitter space where Maddie and I get together on our Civitai Twitter and just talk about everything AI that's happened over the past week. And we want to hear about the stuff you guys are working on. So come join that conversation on Tuesdays at 3 PM Pacific on Twitter. And we're, we're trying to have something moving for you guys every single day. Um, we have a survey on the website right now about, possible Civitai in-person meetups. So if you guys are interested in that in some of the um, more central cities, go ahead and let us know what you feel about that in the, the poll that we have on the website, because we would like to start moving towards setting up in-person events so we can bring the community together and you guys can really kind of get to know each other behind. Aside from just like posting Art. It's really cool to to get together and mingle with people that have the same um, that are passionate about the same shared interests as you, and that is what we are trying to facilitate for you guys. Uh, okay. Oh, am I sorry? I didn't know we had an acronym for that. The Open Model Initiative. Yeah. Um, go read the article on the website. We we talked about this in our Twitter space. I know probably everyone has seen it. There was the post on the subreddit. Um, 
we are a part of the open model initiative to try to get something going so that one of the next major models and the push forward for the open source community can be led by the community and we don't have to rely on these larger entities anymore and that is a very big goal but um i think that the community can really pull together and do it so go ahead and read our article on that we have a brand new discord for that you can find that in that article on the website as well that is all for me today twitch discord i hope you folks have a wonderful weekend i hope that between yesterday with data void today with inner reflections you guys learned a whole lot i know i did i now have to take the weekend and try to put these ideas i have with all this new stuff i learned into a video which i'm sure is going to um going to pretty much take up my whole weekend per usual so guys i appreciate you we'll catch you on monday for ali's office hours i am tyler this is civitai.com peace if you're not subscribed subscribe it helps us out subscribe to the youtube follow us on instagram um as those numbers grow it helps us be able to do cooler and cooler things for you guys so if you're not subscribed yet please do peace everyone